Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is the newest addition to the Indiana Jones franchise. The last sacred cow Disney can slaughter. While the hype of this movie was ramping up, I decided to go rewatch the original four. No, just kidding, I didn't watch Skull. To relive childhood memories and also see if they hold up. And do they? No! Yes, I just said Indiana Jones as a franchise is not very good. Whoa, 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 before you start pulling your guns on me, let me explain myself. I grew up watching Temple of Doom and The Last Crusade, on TV reruns, so I'm coming from a place of nostalgia. But I also understand, hey, maybe things we watched as kids weren't as good as we remember. And that's okay. It's okay to enjoy bad movies. Let me do a mini review of all three. Raiders is okay. It's pretty mid, honestly. A lot of plot armor, especially with Indiana himself. A lot of plot conveniences. Bad acting, especially Harrison. Pretty awkward fight scenes. And terrible editing. Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom is possibly the worst one out of the four. It is a pile of garbage. I feel like I'm watching an episode of Mandalorian Season 3 when I watch this movie. And actually, it feels like the same plot as Mando Season 1, Episode 4. It's crazy to see people tear down these shows for the exact same problems that Indiana Jones has, except they wave it off in Indiana Jones because it's part of their childhood and it was in the 80s. I'm sorry, man, that's just not an excuse anymore. Indiana Jones himself has zero character arc in that movie, and neither does the female protagonist. The female protagonist is just there for comedy and sex appeal. And the jokes aren't funny, by the way, so it's just sex appeal. She screams a lot, she's just just annoying and she has no character. She's an object that Indy picks up and just drags around. And yeah, I forgot to mention, Indiana Jones is a human trafficker in this movie. He picks up this girl that has his serum that he needs, drags her into a car, takes the serum, and you're like, oh great, you're gonna let her go, right? No! We don't let women go here, it's the 80s! Instead, he shoves her in a cargo plane, then shoves her out of the cargo plane with an inflatable boat that they miraculously survive from, and then continues to drag her along the adventure putting her in danger. I'm starting to think Indiana Jones isn't that much of an action hero and should maybe be put in prison. Anyway, Indiana Jones in The Last Crusade is the only one that I really enjoyed. Unlike the first two, we actually get some character work in this movie. Indiana Jones runs into his father while going on adventure. He has grudges against his father for how he raised him. And by the end of the movie, they come out different men, respecting each other. Also, the female lead in this movie has some actual character. She actually feels like a person. She seems at least helpful to Indiana before she comes out as an Nazi. And while she's a Nazi, there's a little sprinkling of her confliction about being a Nazi. Congratulations, Spielberg, you actually made a character. Also, this movie was way funnier than the first two, and that made it more enjoyable. And then Skull exists. I don't care. I'm actually going to defend this movie for a second, just because I think that there's some unjust criticisms thrown at this. I'm not saying it's a good movie, but let me cook here. The whole big deal about this movie is people hate it because it introduces aliens. Oh no, there's aliens. Aliens bad. How dare they put aliens in Indiana Jones. My brother in Christ, this series of movies has confirmed the existence of God and voodoo magic at the same time. If it can do that, I'm pretty sure it's easy to believe that aliens exist. So not a real argument, I'm sorry. By the way, the movie is terrible. I'm just saying, aliens could exist in the Indiana Jones series. It's just that they're not done good. Anyway, onto the main movie we're talking about. The movie starts during the end of World War II, as the Nazis are gathering as many artifacts as they have. Indiana Jones has been captured by the Nazis again for some reason. I forget. He's Indiana Jones. This happens all the time. They take the bag off his head and oh god, the CGI. Not even the CGI. It's the fact that it looks like young Indy, but with old Indy's voice. It's Harrison Ford's old voice. I don't think they did anything to his voice. In some of the lighting, the CGI looks good, but when you shine a bright flashlight at it, yeah, it ain't holding up. Also, Indy has a scar on his chin from the first time he used his whip. That's a big, like, positive nitpick, I'll call it, but I, I liked it. Anyway, the Nazis are looking for the Holy Land and Indy doesn't have it, but they do have it, except it's a fake. So the Nazis are just getting bamboozled left and right. So they take Indy into a room where they're going to hang him, but then the fortress starts being bombed. There's a part where a bomb comes through the room, doesn't it explode? miraculously. And when the bomb comes through, it creates a hole pulling the rug that it's on through the lower levels. It was kind of a cool visual. I liked it. It has no significance to the story at all. The story's still terrible, but I liked that visual. It looked cool. Anyway, the Nazis are evacuating the building because they're being bombed. And Indy sneaks onto the train during this. And during this, Indy takes the clothes of another Nazi and starts driving. Then during a car chase, he ends up on the train. I forget how it works. I'm not going to watch this movie again. And then he starts role-playing as a Nazi. And 
and during this, the CGI is kind of good. It's like meh, mostly because the lighting is pretty flat, so it benefits from that. Also, CGI Harrison Ford is just as bad as an actor as normal Harrison Ford, so there's no improvement. But we get to see him punch Nazis again. Fun! And then while he's trying to be sneaky, undercover Nazi man, the train becomes a giant game of Among Us. Anyway, the main Nazi man has the Dial of Destiny, aka the time travel watch, and Indy is gonna steal it. So he grabs up his little friend, and they grab the dial and run on top of the train. And while they're doing this, they run into a turret on the train that's getting shot at by British airplanes. So the turret is obviously shooting at those airplanes, but it gets shot down and then turns towards Indiana Jones and his little friend. But it also turns in a way that it shoots every other Nazi on the train behind them. You see, this is the problem with the cinematography. I actually can't tell what they're being shot at. On one hand, it looks like they're being shot by the turret by the way it's edited and how it's presented to us, the viewer. But on the other hand, there's other British airplanes flying around and it looks like there's glass breaking on one side of the train. So I don't actually know if they're getting shot by the turret or the other planes. I feel like good faith argument would say that they're getting shot by the other planes, but the planes would have to be flying at them directly to be able to shoot as many Nazis that get shot. So I guess I'll just go with the fact that it is the turret since that's the way that the editing presents it as. But yeah, very convenient that the turret shoots all of the other Nazis and not the two Nazis specifically that need to chase them in order for the plot to progress. Then they fight another big Nazi man and they end up losing the spear from earlier, I think? The cinematography is pretty bad because the little guy drops it and the camera doesn't care to show us if it fell off or anything. It just kind of ends up out of frame and it's not even mentioned later. Then the big Nazi man holds Indy against the ceiling of the tunnel. Wait, I'm sorry. The ceiling of the tunnel while the train is going really fast? I'm sorry. All right, let me break this down. They're on top of a train that's going pretty fast and Indy is being shoved into the ceiling made of concrete and stone. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure his back is going to be torn to shreds. Anyway, that's just common Indiana Jones plot armor. Let's move on. Then we get the main Nazi man and he goes to take the Dial of Destiny, but then he gets taken out pretty quick. He hits a sign on the side of the train tracks and I'm surprised that he survives that later. Then Indy and his little friend jump off the train into the river and that's the end of the little adventure. Fast forward and Indy is old now and he's a grumpy old man knocking on his neighbor's door. Turns out it's moon day, celebrating the moon landing and the first man on the moon. Indy goes to work and is teaching his students and nobody is interested. I liked the theme that they were trying to play with, saying that people now are not interested in artifacts or archaeology. They're more interested in the moon and the final frontier of space. That's an interesting theme to play with if they would actually play with it instead of just like mentioning it once or twice. It'd be nice if we got some actual meat to chew on in these movies, but we don't. Anyway, Indy is asking questions. Nobody's answering, except for this girl that's in the back, and she's really smart. That's crazy. I wonder if she's gonna be the main character. Moving on, we see that Indy is retiring and is given a clock. I wonder what that represents. Perhaps a dial of destiny? Anyway, then he goes to the bar, and the mystery girl from earlier follows him there. And then there's another disco mystery girl also following him and talks about him and calls him Henry Jones. I'm sorry, I thought his name was Junior, not not Henry. Wasn't that the whole joke of Crusade that his name was Junior and he got the Indiana name from his dog, but now his name is Henry? Is Junior short for Henry or is Henry short for Junior? I don't know. I don't understand these movies and I guess continuity is broken now, so... Nice. We cut to see the Nazi man and he's survived. Wow, that's cool. A shame if plot armor didn't exist. Anyway, he talks about being a Nazi and how the Nazis didn't lose the war, Hitler did. Ooh, spooky. Anyway, then we see the woman with Indy at the bar and it turns out that her name is Helena and she's the daughter of his little friend in the first 10 minutes. And Indiana Jones is her godfather. And they really want you to remember that she is his goddaughter because they keep saying it like five times in the movie. Anyway, she is also looking for the Dial of Destiny and wonders if Indy knows where it is. She talks about it like it's gonna be his final hurrah, one last epic adventure before he finally retires, almost like it's his last crusade. Then they go to a storage room with artifacts and Indy finds the Dial of Destiny and he hid it in a box of spears. All right, okay. But the thing is his little friend asked him to destroy it because that's what he told Helena's father years ago. But no, it's just hidden in storage. It's not even in a museum, it's just right 
rotting away in storage. I don't even think they explain why he kept it. Anyway, then the Nazis show up, and there's one with a country accent that was just so funny to me. He shoots one of the teachers there, and the disco chick is like, why'd you do that? And he's like, well, I'm just doing what the doctor tells me. I ain't allowed no witnesses. I'm glad this character has a country accent. Then Helena subverts our expectations and steals the dial and runs off, and Indy is chased by Nazis across the city. But before he starts getting chased, there's this moment where Elena has left, and he's getting cornered by the Nazis, and he's just like so confused. He's just like, uh, where am I? Who, who are you? Who are she? Why we? He just, it comes across as like Harrison Ford is just this scared man. And I was just like sitting there like, man, what are you doing? Like, what's going on now? Like, is this where we're taking the character? He's just like this scared little man. He gets captured, then grabs a horse, rides it through a parade, and then rides it through a subway, and then says, hey, mister, hold on to my horse, which was just another fun line. There's a lot of like small fun lines in this movie that kind of made me forget about all the terrible things going on, but yeah, it was kind of fun. I like it. Then he escapes and we see Gimli from the OG movies. I like this guy. We're told that Indy helped Gimli come to America and brought his family with him. I'm glad to see that he got a happy ending in these movies. I thought they were going to kill him off for no reason in this movie, but no, he just stays with his children and grandchildren during the adventure. I like it. This is a good character. Anyway, Gimli becomes the one who knows all and ends up finding where Helena is going. So Indiana Jones takes off to stop Helena from selling it in an auction. Gimli takes Indy to the airport and has his last farewell. Give him hell, Indiana Jones. Yeah, I like Gimli. He's cool. Then Indy flies to where Helena is and stops her from selling the dial. Indy tells her about the dangers of the box and says it's Pandora's box. And then the Nazi comes in and he says, no, it is my box. I like that line. It was fun. It was a fun line. I like it. I like uh, the line. And then this is where the capitalism joke comes from, from the trailers. While it sounded really cringe in the trailers, I think it played well here or as good as it's going to get. In the trailer, it came off as Phoebe Waller-Bridge being a feminist and just saying something and saying ooga booga capitalism bad. But in the movie, it plays kind of differently because that is Helena's whole ideology. The joke she is saying is something she believes in. She stole it, therefore it's hers. That's capitalism to her. And that's what she believes in. She stole it and now she's going to sell it. She does not care what it does. She doesn't care if it's dangerous to people. She doesn't care if it should be in a museum. She only cares about the money that it will make her. What does that sound like? Wall Street, AKA capitalism. So yeah, never thought I'd see the day. Anyway, and then they chase each other more, and this chase scene is just too long, and there's too many things going on. Helena's ex shows up, and he's apparently a gang member, or even a gang leader, in fact. So Helena's being chased by the gang member, and Indy is also chasing her. And while that's going on, Indy and Elena are both chasing the Nazi. It's like, you gotta calm down. This is Indiana Jones we're talking about. This isn't supposed to be Fast and Furious. Anyway, Indy, Helena, and this random kid go to Greece because they need to go scuba diving to find the other piece of the dial. And this is where the dialogue is kind of confusing. Helena says that this is where they'll find the next piece of the dial because apparently these Greek people were going out to actually time travel or something. I don't remember. I don't remember. Like I said, it's kind of confusing. But once they get there, they don't find the dial. They find clues to where the dial is. Anyway, jumping back a bit, they go scuba diving and the water scenes are kind of rough. I have no idea what's going on. Indy lights a flare. Indy's too old to swim, in my opinion. I can't tell who's who. The lighting is really bad. I don't know what Disney's fetish is with underwater scenes, but they gotta stop. They should have learned from Little Mermaid. They just can't do this anymore. Anyway, they find a box and go back up and, oh no, the Nazis are here. And they killed one of Indy's friends that I didn't know, so I don't care about it. Elena tries to strike a deal with them and tells them where the other half of the dial is. During this, Indy lights a piece of dynamite and blows up a little bit of the ship. Anyway, they start sailing off in another boat, and apparently Helena lied to them about where it was, which I could see going, but I wish they just revealed that she was lying during the same scene that that was in. But anyway, Indiana melts the box of wax and reveals this golden circle that they need. Anyway, they go somewhere else in Greece. I forgot again. It's probably Italy or something. I don't remember, and I don't care. The kid ends up getting snatched up, but Indy and Helena don't really mind that much, so all right. Then they go into a cave, and they notice light, and there's an obvious opening, but the dialogue becomes way more clunky when Indiana Jones has to say
say, I think there's an opening. Really, bro? You really think there's an opening there? Wow, I had no idea. It's not like there's light coming out of there. Anyway, they find the tomb of Aristotle and they see that the phoenix on the side has propellers, which was really cheesy to me. Also in his grave, they find a watch, which was also funny to me. And also I must say at this point, I was loving the gun sounds. I think the sound design for the guns were on point. Every single gunshot sounded infinitely better than any of the gunshots in the original trilogy. Oh, they were so good. I loved them. Anyway, then the Nazis show up, except the kid has escaped them because he went swimming with the big guy because he was handcuffed to him. The kid ended up stealing the keys to the handcuffs, unhandcuffed himself, got through a hole in a cage, and then taught himself how to swim. Yeah, this movie don't make sense, but apparently you can just you can just swim on demand. You don't have to take any time to learn it. You can just do that. Anyway, the Nazis then start fighting, and Indiana gets shot, except he survives for like the rest of the movie, which is like 30 minutes. Again, crazy plot armor. Anyway, the Nazis get a hold of the dial. They go back to an airport and they take off with the dial and want to go back in time to make sure that the Nazis win World War II, which was an interesting premise if it was done well. Elena sneaks onto the airplane while this is going on and the kid sneaks onto another airplane and starts flying it because he just learned how to fly really easily. Okay. Then the Nazis go back in time, but it ends up that they're actually in ancient Greece during a war. This reveal was actually kind of surprising to me. I heard that there were going to be Roman aspects into this or Greek aspects into this, I guess, but I didn't know that we were actually going to see a Greek war which was cool. I believe it was the War of Sicily or something. I forget the name of it. All I know it was a war and I don't care. Anyway, then we see catastrophic time bending effects like the Nazis crashing their airplane into the city, which just like messes up everything to do with like history and changes the course of history. I guess that explains the propellers on the Phoenix earlier, but still, I think there'd be a lot more stuff that the Greeks would make about this dragon, they call it, other than just putting propellers on a Phoenix, you know? Anyway, Indy survives the crash and ends up on the shore and he starts being really depressed and he says that he wants to stay in these Greek times because he studied it all his life. I don't know why he became miserable all of a sudden and just was like, yep, I'm here. I should die here. This is appropriate. I will die here. Goodbye. Let me die. I thought they were genuinely going to go this direction, but they apparently just needed Helena to just punch him and just like take over the scene or something. I don't know. It was really weird. I didn't like it. Anyway, we wake up and see that Indy has gotten his bullet wound patched up and Helena is in his living room. He's depressed because he didn't get to stay in Greek times. Whatever, bro. Gimli shows up with his children and then Gimli and his children leave with Helena to go get ice cream. And then we see Marion, Indiana Jones's ex-wife. And then they do the kissing joke from the first movie. God damn it. I'm gonna be honest, Indiana Jones has no riz. I said it, I'm sorry, he just doesn't have good riz. Most of his relationships with women aren't good, and he also kissed a Nazi, so kinda bad luck. But with that, the movie ends, ending the Indiana Jones franchise, hopefully. And yeah, Indy 5 is pretty bad. It's not as bad as Temple of Doom, so that's good. I think since I've been watching the originals, my brain just continuously was dying by watching them, and by the time I watched Indy 5, I was already brain dead, so I actually enjoyed it more than than I thought I was. And I know I'm gonna get hate for saying that the Indiana Jones movies aren't good, but you know what? Fight me. I don't care. Write hate comments. I could care less. I think the editing in this movie was good. It's definitely the best of the franchise. I think it's better than the first two movies because the editing is really bad in the first two. I want you to know that. And bad editing can take me out of a movie really easily. Also, the production quality has a certain charm to it that I liked. Don't get me wrong. The movie looks incredibly cheap, but at the beginning, there was a panning shot of the Nazi base that was really cool cool. And then there was also a shot of the Nazi plane going into the time portal opening. And that was really cool. But those were the only two shots that look cool. I think the color grading was kind of nice and kind of covered up the bad CGI and stage look of it all. But yeah, overall, the story isn't great. But that's to be expected with indie movies and especially owned by Disney. Harrison Ford as Indy was fine. He's still not a good actor and the CGI cannot fix that. And I also liked that he was still somewhat smart. He fixed the tricycle that they were on with gum. Does it make sense? 
sense? No. But again, this is the guy that survived a plane crash with an inflatable boat. So he also has the same, if not more, plot armor than he had in the old movies. I guess he's a Mary Sue. So yeah, that's pretty bad. But I do like the arc that they try to give him in this movie with Moon Day and everything to do with space exploration and how nobody cares about adventure movies anymore and, and everyone just cares about the moon and the final frontier of space. And I liked how they connected that with the main villain. It would have been cool if it was actually fleshed out properly, but we kind of just were told, hey, doesn't it suck that people care about the moon? Anyway, fight scene. Helena is not as hateable as I thought she was going to be. Don't get me wrong. Phoebe Waller-Bridge can't act, so she's not a great character. She also doesn't really have a character arc either. She's kind of hollow. They start her off being a capitalist and trying to steal all of these artifacts and wanting to sell them, not caring about their actual value, but only caring about their monetary value. And I thought they were going to go through with that theme and she was going to become the next Indiana Jones adventurer, saving ancient artifacts, bringing them to a museum. But there's nothing in the movie that shows that she cares about artifacts anymore. She just cares about saving Indiana at the end. So she probably will still continue to steal items and just sell them to the black market. I wouldn't put it past her. The Nazi villain was kind of cool. I think he's the best villain of the series, honestly. Mads Mikkelsen, while not having a lot to work with, is still enjoyable to watch. And I like the villain's motivation. A Nazi not being able to take in the fact that they lost the war and he wants to go back through time to fix that. I have no idea what the consequences are of that or if there's a multiverse in the Indiana Jones universe. And I kind of don't want to think about that. So we're going to move on. I also like his gang. You have the country guy. You have the guy with the country accent with the killer mustache. And you also have the big man who doesn't speak a word. There were a couple moments where he moves and it looks incredibly unnatural. So I think he's CGI. And then there's the disco chick, which dies pretty early on because she's CIA. But we have a wide range of wacky characters that Indiana Jones can go up against, which is fun. I think I'm going to give this movie a four out of 10. I think that's fair. It's better than Temple of Doom and Skull, which is really all I wanted. And it has some enjoyable action scenes in it and some nice ideas, but all of the character arcs are left unresolved and we're just kind of left confused about what just happened on screen. I think if you're a giant Indiana Jones fan and you don't care about quality and just want to see Indiana Jones on the screen for the last time, I think you'll enjoy it. Personally, I didn't really care for it. That's been it for me. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. Thank you and good night.